Is this portrait Mary Tudor, Queen of France or Queen Catherine of Aragon? Let's settle the debate. The evidence can be divided into six main categories and we shouldn't neglect any of it. There are three initials. Letter S on French hood, letter K in necklace. And tiny small letter on bodice is either letter C or letter E. But in old form of the letters. The jewelry with initials of one's name or title or title of husband or bethroad was popular in 15th and 16th century. Hence these are big clues. S could stand for Spain. K could stand for Catherine or for Carolus which is Latin version of Charles. C could be for Castile or Charles. And E for England or Espana, which in Spanish is Spain. Mary Rose Tudor was once Bethro to Charles V, who was at the time heir of Castile, and presumed heir of entire Spain. Thus initials could potentially fit her. But also other women. Isabella I of Castile was suggested. And I am all for including Queen Joanna. And now you might think. No way. The necklace clearly shows Tudor roses. But first of all, red and white roses were popular even prior to Tudor dynasty as they are associated with Virgin Mary. Red for love or suffering and white for purity. Thus anybody could use those symbols. Secondly, these flowers have orange-red pointed petals. They are not red roses. That's for sure. So what is it then? Me, being big fan of Catherine of Aragon, of course I checked the pomegranate blossoms first. And I was hugely disappointed. Because color looks okay, could be, but the shape of petals is wrong. And then I went on holiday and by chance there were lots of pomegranate bushes. Plenty already had big green fruit, but few had blossoms, and I noticed something peculiar behind it. Apparently this is called sepal. It protects flower in the bud, and then in some fruit types the sepals can also form so-called accessory fruit. It doesn't fall off, but becomes part of the fruit itself. I could mostly see six sepals, but also few with seven, and on grown fruit I have found even five. Hence I believe the flower in necklace could actually be sepals of pomegranate. Pomegranate in unusual form. This is big point for Queen Catherine because it was her chosen symbol. But also for her mother who adopted it after fall of Granada in 1492. Because Granada in Spanish means pomegranate. Then around bodice we have lots of tiny golden scallops. According to Guy who suggested this portrait is Mary Rose, scallops are evidence against Catherine of Aragon. Because her symbol was pomegranate and not scallops. I guess this also means Queen Isabella has no reason to wear it either. In Renaissance scallop was used in art and in architecture. And in Christianity is mainly associated with baptism, certain pilgrimage sites and Saint James the Great. He is apostle and patron saint of Spain. The most important pilgrimage in all of Spain is Camino de Santiago, way of Saint James, it goes to his shrine in Santiago de Compostela. This pilgrimage has been for centuries commemorated by wearing scallops. Catherine of Aragon made this pilgrimage before going to England. It's in almost every book about her. Furthermore period records don't go in Mary's favor. Because they describe her as tall and slender. While Catherine is short and pleasantly plump. Some say it cannot be Catherine of Aragon due to hair color. Because the hair is darker shade of strawberry blonde or light red, and not auburn, meaning brownish red. I blame modern biographers for this. They keep rewriting the original words with what they think it meant. And keep getting it wrong. They write auburn instead of the original red golden which can mean strawberry blonde or vividly red or any combination of red and golden or blonde. And if you just look at second painting by Sitto where it is clearly same person, then you can clearly see why such hair would be described as red and golden. Because it is combination of those colors. In my opinion golden is winning, 
but it is not only color present. On right you can see the third painting by Sitto. But sadly it has been severely damaged in past. They restored it best they could, but it doesn't reflect colors and shades as it should, likely due to that past damage. In my opinion, if Sitto didn't paint all three at same time, he clearly got inspired by woman he once painted, and perhaps reused his old sketches of her. So I'd not dwell that much upon the dating of the other two. Unless Dendrology comes back with some surprising number. You can only date this painting based upon fashion. But sadly people tend to pluck numbers out of thin air. Not backing it up. I hope I am not such person. But then, properly explaining the differences between English, Netherlandish and Spanish fashion would take at least an hour. If I keep it focused on decade or two. This is clearly from Northwestern Europe. Judging by the French hood and split kirtle, France or Netherlands. But due to artists' association with Spanish and Netherlandish royals, it is more likely to be Netherlandish. But why would an English or Spanish princess wear foreign fashion? Well, Mary's fiancé Charles was raised in Hasburg, Netherlands, hence she could be depicted in such clothes in portrait for him. Catherine's case has only two explanations. Either her sister Joanna aided Catherine by sending her some nice clothes while Catherine was widowed and in financial difficulties. Or Catherine was told how much weather was different in England and how unsuitable Spanish fashion was for it. Hence she prudently took with her more suitable clothes. But her closest source of inspiration for Northwestern fashion was her sister-in-law Margaret of Austria who, despite the name, was from Netherlands. But, how would we date the fashion? Piece by piece. The hanging necklace appears in French and Netherlandish art in 1490s, 1500s. Similia, but not same in England in 1510s. Heavy necklace called Carcanet was popular in Netherlands from 1500s up to around 1525, at least. The square white chemise in Netherlands up to at least late 1500s. In my opinion up to around 1510. But in England it was normal even decades later. Gown without sleeves pinned up. Up to around 1510 in Netherlands, up to around mid-1510s in England. So far everything points to either 1500s or 1510s, which doesn't help us. Then there is the headwear. Netherlands had its own subtype of French hood, and you cannot date it based upon French examples. Hence we have to use portraits of Netherlandish ladies. But before we look at them I have to confess that I adjusted the brightness for several of them. Because you'd not see anything. And in one case it was still invisible on video, so I photoshopped it. And one portrait had been altered in past, and somebody painted out the back of French hood. I tried to fix it, but I could have fixed it wrong. But the front is correct, now finally about the fashion. If we look at early Netherlandish subtype of French hood, it is way more structured than normal French hood, not just in front but also at the back. And it has very notable bend, approximately in neck area and solid golden pieces decorating the front. Sometimes it could even look bit squarish as if we looked at flat hood. But note that gradually it is going up. Above shoulders, and eventually it gets even above tip of the chin. Portraits from mid-1510s all show different angle of the head, so the one most on right seems as if it is structured again, but the difference mostly has to do with the angle and amount of hair beneath the headwear. So where does our lady belongs to? It's somewhere in 1500s, between 1500 and 1510. In my opinion it looks way too different from those assumed to be around year 1500 and year 1510, hence I'd expect several years between them. Hence my wide estimate would be 1500 to 1510, but I think we could narrow it to approximately 1503 to 1507. You're welcome to disagree with that. But please, with evidence other than period records saying Mary Rose was painted in 1514. 
if she was, this is not that portrait. So could it be Mary? Not in 1514, but in 1500s. She was born in 1496, engaged to Charles in 1506. She had no reason to wear Netherlandish fashion prior. Hence between 1506 and 1510 she was 10 to 14 years old. Could be. But between 1506 and 1507 she was only 10 or 11 years old, and it couldn't be her. But let's not forget our other candidates. Of course it would be entirely illogical if Sitto depicted Queen Isabella I of Castile in non-Spanish fashion, considering he worked for her for an entire decade in Spain. Plus the woman is young. Queen Joanna, who was Catherine's older sister has married to Netherlands. Hence in theory she seems as most logical. But the features are the problem here. Considering these are both by artists of very good skill, this level of similarity is not playing in Joanna's favor. Joanna inherited Isabella's very narrow nose. And Ferdinand's full lips. Our girl doesn't have that. Her lips are more like Isabella, if she would smile. And overall the face is pretty similar to Isabella too, except the nose. So if you ask me, it could just as well be her daughter. But Mary's parents looked similar also. But I tracked down the likely sketch of Mary from life, and it really fits her likeness from Woburn Abbey portrait, and neither looks like Our Lady. But neither does Catherine in her later portraits. Could be due to poor skill of later artists, who knows? Just please don't go speculating it is the other Mary Tudor. Yes, it resembles her the most. But it cannot be her, because the fashion is prior to her even being born. The last piece of evidence is not to do with painting itself, but with understanding it in context of Sito's entire career. It kills me that I cannot show you the pictures, because I am uncertain of copyrights, but I'll leave link in the description and you can check it for yourself. But I shall explain here. Few years back the team of research is proven that Sitto was involved in making certain altarpiece in Toledo Cathedral in 1489. Three years prior than when he was known to arrive to Spain. That is important not because they know Sitto painted two male saints, but mainly because they also think he created design for several female saints, and then other painters created them based upon his design. And those researchers directly point out the similarities in features of two of those female saints and Sitos Magdalene from Detroit Museum of Arts. The features aren't exact match, not like it is a same person, but still bear remarkable similarity. Catherine of Aragon would be four in 1489. But Toledo was an important Spanish city and royals visited it quite often. Hence Sitto could have been inspired by her family members. Mary Tudor wasn't even born, and the existence of this altarpiece in Spain makes her the least likely candidate for being our unknown lady.